Hey, this is Adam from Figmatic, and today we're going to be looking at how to uh, design, animate, and finally export uh, banner designs from Figma directly to HTML, uh, including a number of advertising platforms. So the first thing we're going to do, if you haven't already done so, is install a plugin called Bannerify. So you can do that by going to the Figma icon up in the top left, uh, clicking on Community, and searching for Bannerify. So you can see uh, it's popped up with uh, two different results. So we've got our plugins tab, which is the plugin itself. So I've already got this installed, um, but if you don't have it installed, you can just click on the install button and that will uh, install it for you. And the other result, which we'll come back to in a second, is under the files tab. So uh, this is a, uh, an example design that I've published uh, on the Figma files, commu community files area. And what you can do is you can actually click on this and duplicate it to your own uh, Figma files. And what that's going to do is give you a, a really easy uh, quick start just to play around with the plugin and see how it works without actually uh, spending some time designing some banners for yourselves. So uh, I've got that duplicated over here. And you can see we've got a bunch of banners uh, already set up. And so if I right click and go to plugins, uh, you'll see I've got Bannerify just here. So I'm going to click on that. So once that loads, uh, you're going to see uh, a few different things on your screen. So uh, I'll just go through each uh, part of the UI uh, one by one. So the first thing you'll probably notice is if you scroll through, you can see previews on the right hand side of all of the banners that we can actually see in our Figma file. So what Bannerify is doing is it's actually going through every frame in your project or in your page and it's treating every top level frame uh, as, a, as a new banner design. So on the left here you can see if I expand out a couple of these frames, uh, I've named them to represent some of the commonly uh, used sizes for uh, banner ads and you can see each one's just a, a regular uh, frame in Figma and inside of that frame you've got just regular uh, layers as well. So we've got some text layers, we've got um, an image layer and we've got a, another frame which has auto layout on it to do our buttons. So that's just a frame uh, with some text in it and then it's got auto layout uh, applied onto it. So you can see that here, uh, it's got um, auto layout on there. So if you want to remove that, you could, um, but for now I've just left that on to make it easier to update. So you can see here in every, uh, in every group or in every frame, uh, this is a list of all the layers inside of each frame. So these are, these are representing exactly what we can see over here in our Figma layers. So anything that's uh, added inside these frames will show up in uh, the timeline here. And you can see the layer names over here. So the large uh, rectangle layer over here that represents uh, this layer in our file over here. This large rectangle. Um, so that's that's kind of a, a visual breakdown of, of how all the layers look uh, when they get loaded into Bannerify uh, automatically. Uh, the second thing you'll notice is the animation timelines uh, here. So because I've duplicated this from uh, another project, I've already set some animation styles on it. So Bannerify will remember uh, animations that you've applied to your layers in Figma. So when you relaunch it, all of these uh, animation styles will actually be saved and you can you can rerun it again. Uh, so these timelines actually affect uh, how fast and how long the animations will wait to actually start playing. And you can preview what they look like by just clicking on the play button over here. So if you click on the play button for any of the banners, uh, you'll get a real-time preview of what that animation actually looks like uh, when it gets played back. So that's a couple of examples. Um, the other cool thing is it'll automatically update the animation on the fly as you change uh, certain timings. So if I increase this, uh, you can see it's reflecting the change immediately in the preview. And likewise, if I click on this loop toggle, uh, enabling that will ensure that the animation just keeps going over and over and over again, even after the timeline's finished. 
Uh, the other thing you'll notice is uh, on the left hand side, just next to the layer name, is a drop down for uh, animation styles. So at the moment, this one has a fade in left on it, uh, but I can quite easily change that to come in from the bottom. So if I click on that, uh, you can see here it's coming up from the bottom instead. I can move that back here. So I can make both those things happen at the same time. I can fade in from the right. I can do a rotation if I wanted to, which is a bit out of control, but you might want something like that. Um, so there's many, many um, animations that are already configured for you and uh, they're categorized by the type of animation. So these are all entrances. So these are all animations that will uh, help an element to enter into the frame. And if you wanted to do an exit, you can also do that too. So I can apply an exit uh, onto, this, onto this element here and that'll actually take it out of the frame in an animated way. Uh, and then there are a few other ones as well. So we can do a scale up. So this will kind of scale up an element. Uh, and then we've got a whole nother category for attention seekers. So you might want um, to draw some attention to one of your elements in the, uh, in the creative. So for example, this heartbeat animation, I can kind of click that on. And now that element's just gonna do a little bit of a pulsing animation uh, on a loop because I've just set it to loop. Um, but there are many, many different animations um, that you can try out and add. This one's kind of a jello sort of one. I can increase the speed to make it a little bit more impactful. I'll slow it down a bit. So there's many different animations and it really just depends on your creative and, and what kind of uh, feel you're going for with the animation style. Um, but you might be thinking it's pretty annoying to uh, go through and, and change a select box every single time when you want to change an animation. And um, I completely agree. So uh, there's a few things that we can do to make the, uh, the selection and um, updating process of animations much easier. So the first one would be uh, just by simply doing a multi-select. So I can actually uh, click on any layers from any of the frames. And you can see down here, it's it's uh, selecting all those layers for me. And uh, I can do a bulk animation apply to all the layers I've just selected. So for example, uh, I can also deselect them. So I'm just gonna get rid of uh, some of these layers now. Um, so for example, if I wanted to change uh, the first two uh, layers of this frame to have a certain animation or the first three, I can just select those three layers and then down here I've got the same animation options. So in this case I'm just going to do uh, I'm just going to flip in animation and I'm just going to change that actually to be a rotation. So you get a little bit of a preview down here uh, of that and you can adjust the speed beforehand. And when you're happy with it uh, you can just click on apply animation to in this case three layers. So I'm going to click that button and what that's doing is it's applying our animation that we just set uh, to those three layers. So you can see here, uh, it's applied the rotation animation to those three layers, um, but also the timings that we uh, set for those animations as well. So now all these are the same timing and the same animation. So if we play that back, uh, you can see they're all coming in at the same time. Uh, another way we can go about doing this, which uh, can be helpful if you want to do it for an entire uh, a banner would be just to click on the select box at the top of the banner and that will select the layers that are inside of that particular banner. So you could do this for multiple and and do that quite easily and just apply one style to every single thing, every single banner if you wanted to. Um, but in this case, I don't want to do that, but that is an option. Uh, another way that you can target layers is by using this drop down in the top. So this quick select layer names drop down. If you open that up, uh, we can see that uh, we can actually select layers based on their type and name. So uh, it categorizes it by the type. So we've got frames, rectangles, and text. And then each layer name will be grouped uh, based on that naming being similar. So in this case, uh, if I wanted to select all of the background uh, images, I can simply click on this uh, marcher background rectangle, 
click on that and you can see here it's pre-selected all of those layers based on that name. And what that now means is I can uh, apply an animation specifically just to that type of layer or that layer name. So in this case, I might change it to a fade in. And you can see down here, I've just kind of uh, configured that and get a bit of a preview of what it's going to look like. And when I'm happy with that, I'm just going to click apply uh, to 11 layers. So I'm going to do that now. And you'll see it update in real time. So it's just shifted it to uh, be a delay of uh, 0 0.6 seconds uh, as a fade in. And you can see all of the layers have just been updated. So if we replay that now, we've got our animations and now we've got a fade in instead of the, um, the scale up animation that we had previously. So that's a really easy way to target specific layers um, as long as you've named them to be the same. And as long as they're the right group that you want, uh, you can very easily switch between those and target them. So it's a really quick way of making uh, updates and uh, a really nice way to apply a bunch of animations after you've sort of played around with it in the preview window in real time. So I really like doing it that way. Uh, there's also another feature that we haven't covered yet which is uh, these two magic settings. So we've got magic delay and we've got magic speed. Um, the other way you could think about this is uh, by calling it something like lazy mode. So if, you're, if you've if you been handed uh, a design or you've been tasked with doing a design of a bunch of banners and you're on a crazy deadline and you don't have time to really uh, finesse all the animations the way that you would usually really like to, um, this is a nice way to create some animation offset without having to manually go through and do it yourself. Um, and so what I mean by that, it's probably easy if I just show you. So if you click on the magic delay uh, select box, you'll get a bunch of options for uh, offsets. So in this case, I'm going to click on uh, 0 0.4 seconds magic delay. And you'll see what happens when I click that now. So I'm just going to click that. And you can see the whole timeline has just completely shifted uh, as far as the delays go. So we selected 0 0.4 seconds. And so what's that, what that's done is it's actually uh, added 0 0.4 seconds to every layer in a cascading uh, manner. So you can see on the right-hand side, all those uh, animations are now cascading uh, in terms of when they start the playback. And this gets applied to every single banner in your uh, creative. So that's a really easy way to make uh, updates to all of your banners at the same time without having to manually add all those different offsets if all you really want is a simple uh, cascade. So that's back down to a little bit less and we can just keep changing it until we're happy with it. So this is a slightly quicker one. Can go even, quick, even quicker. So we might be happy with that. Um, and then the other side is kind of what you'd expect as well. So in this case, uh, the magic speed will change all of the layers to have exactly the same speed. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to make everything have uh, 0 0.7 second speed. So I'm going to click that. And you can see all the layers now have exactly the same speed. So that's, that's a pretty nice way of um, easily creating uh, cascading animations without very much effort at all. Um, and these, these kind of work independently of each other. So if you did want to have uh, different delays over here, just some sort of crazy delays with different speeds. So if I wanted to set um, the, if I want to set the same speed on all of these layers, um, but keep all the offsets that I've already manually set, uh, I can still change the speed and the offsets won't be affected. So if I change that to 0 0.5, you can see it's pulled back to where all my offsets already were. So it's not going to mess those up unless I uh, specifically override the delay. So that can be pretty pretty nice if you just want to. Um, play around with speeds or play around with delays 
but you've already kind of got your speeds or delays um, sorted and you just want to kind of automate the other one. So that's a really nice way of doing that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to change all of these to be um, similar. So I'm going to quickly go through and show you how I can just quickly um, make all of these banners look good without much effort. So uh, in this case, I'm going to use a fade in bottom for all of my brand names. And I really want that to come in first. So I'm just going to change that and apply it. So all my brand names are now fade in bottom. I can see that over here. So that's pretty nice. And then if I go to the brand characters, uh, that's going to let me pick another animation. So in this case, I'm going to do the same thing and do fade in bottom. And I'm not going to be too worried about the delay because I think I'm going to cascade those out myself in a second using the magic delays. And then I'll do the tagline. And again, we'll do a fade in bottom. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set all of these to a 0 0.4 second delay. Let's see how that looks. So it's probably slightly too slow, so I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. I'm fairly happy with that. Um, but the one thing I'm not happy with is the background, so I'm going to just change uh, the background to take much longer to fade in completely. So I'm just going to do a fade in. And I'll see what that looks like. Okay, so that's just been applied. You can just see it uh, applying the timeline. And I think that's better now that we've slowed down the fade in a little bit. So now that I've uh, shown you how to do the animation, uh, there's probably one more thing uh, I'll, I'll show you before we export the banners. So uh, you can see over here, I'll use a bigger one actually. So you can see over here, uh, we've got all of our layout um, from Figma. And so this one is for the square layer. So if I jump to that here, and you'll notice if I make a change in my uh, Figma frame, you're probably wondering, well, why is it still looking like that in the preview? And uh, that's a good question to ask. And the answer is uh, you have to refresh the data if you want to get uh, that position updated in here or, or add any layers or change any layers in Figma after you've opened Bannerify. So it's very simple. You just click on this little refresh button up here and you'll see in a second the new previews loaded with the text in the brand new spot. So that's coming from over here and we can see it here just in the corner where it should be. So that's, that's perfectly, um, perfectly normal to do that. So if you do need to make a bunch of changes and see those reflected in uh, the Bannerify preview, you can simply click on that uh, refresh icon and you will see those pop right up. So I'm actually just going to leave that there for now uh, just to kind of demo what that's going to look like in a second. So once you're happy with your banners um, and the animations in them, you can click on this big uh, blue button up here which says export banners to HTML. So I'm just going to click on that and you'll see this panel pop out. Uh, up the top here, we've got a little bit of a uh, pseudo preview of roughly how um, the banner is going to be exported or the preview page. So Bannerify creates a, uh, a custom preview page which basically loads in all of the exported banners to a single page that you can review and play all the animations um, on at once. And so this is really helpful if you're sharing a link around internally or sharing a link with one of your clients um, or you just want to get someone else's eyes over it uh, for approval. 
And so Bannerify will generate this automatically. Um, so we get a few options here. Uh, one of the options is to use dark mode. So this will change uh, the background of the page to be in a dark mode uh, setting. Uh, by default, it's just, it's just the same gray as the Figma background. Um, the other option we have, which is sometimes a requirement for banners, is just adding a black border to all of the banners. So this is something that you can do uh, if the creative or the brief uh, requires you to add a black border, uh, which it sometimes does. The other thing you can do is add a little preloader animation. So you can see these little animating spinners here. Uh, this is an optional setting which will show that spinner in place of uh, just a blank square if you want to have uh, a little preloading state while all the images are loading. So we can use that. And finally, there's a setting for compressing your images. So uh, depending on the use case for your uh, banners, sometimes certain uh, advertising providers have a certain limit that they uh, impose on file sizes. So if you do need to get your image sizes down to get under that limit, uh, you can play around with the image compression, which is built into Bannerify. And this will really help to reduce uh, the image sizes that you would usually get uh, directly from Figma. Uh, it will take slightly longer, not much longer, but it will take a little bit longer if you do decide to compress them. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that off for now. And I'm just going to leave all the other settings uh, as default. And the second thing that you probably have noticed is this export format select box. So by default, this is set to uh, vanilla HTML and CSS. And what that means is it's not loading in any code for a third party advertising platform uh, like these options here. Um, so this can be really useful if you just want to uh, put a banner up on your, your own website or one of your clients' websites, uh, but not necessarily link them to uh, an advertising campaign or advertising platform. Uh, it can also just be useful if you want to uh, prototype an animation or interaction and display it as a banner and sort of send that around or put that uh, in one of your prototypes or something like that. Um, so the vanilla HTML CSS option is uh, really good if you just want to get a bunch of code and use it however you want uh, without any extra code specifically for advertising platforms. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to use vanilla HTML and the option that you get with that is to put a, a URL in there. So if you don't put a URL in there, the banner won't have any links. It won't have any um, redirect on it. It'll uh, just be a, a plain uh, div. And if you do put a link in there, uh, that div will be rendered as, a, as, a, uh, as an anchor tag with a href in it. So if someone clicks on it, it'll take them to whatever website or URL uh, you wanted to put in here. So in this case, I'm just going to leave that off as well. And uh, when you've configured all these settings, uh, the final step is just to click on this blue button down here, which says uh, export 11 banners. So I'm going to click that now. So now it's doing its thing uh, behind the scenes. And in about one second, uh, you'll see a zip file pop up, which you can save. So that's up here. And uh, by default, it's just the, uh, the format that you've exported and then today's date with a timestamp. And uh, you can change that name if you want to, but for now, I'm just going to leave that as, as is. So I've just hit save. If I jump to my desktop, you can see this is the zip file. It's just generated for me. So I'm going to double click on that, open up that folder. And the first thing you'll notice is there's all these different folders which uh, have the same uh, layer names as we can see over here in Figma in the left hand side. And the other thing it's done is prefixed all of those uh, layer names with the dimensions from each of those frames. Uh, so if we jump into one of these, you can see there's a few files in here. Uh, they all look like that. So all the structures are exactly the same. And uh, if we just go through these files really quickly, um, so it automatically generates a backup uh, JPEG for all of your banners. Uh, so that can be very handy, especially for the advertising uh, platforms, but you may just want that JPEG export as well for other reasons. Uh, and then the images folder, this is providing us with uh, all of the individual uh, layers and images that we'll need. 
uh, text is rendered as SVGs. So that's to keep the file size down uh, to a really low uh, number. So it's like two kilobytes for this one. And uh, also have super, super sharp uh, quality regardless of what kind of screen you're rendering it on compared to um, a PNG. Uh, but the PNG uh, looks looks pretty good as well and the file size is pretty low if you're just using it for things like buttons. Um, but the key thing that we want to look at at the moment is just a quick snapshot of how everything kind of turned out in the render. So I'm just going to click on this index.html file that uh, was in the root of the, the folder we just unzipped. So if I click on that, You can see here, this is all of the banners that we just exported uh, from Figma. So if I resize that, um, this page is completely responsive. Um, it'll automatically figure out the best place to put the banners. Um, so you have a really nice preview page. And I can keep, keep dragging that out. Um, and the other neat thing is this little play button up here. So if you wanted to replay those animations uh, over and over again, you can just keep clicking that button and you'll see those all play in sync, uh, which can be really nice if you just want to get an overall view of how everything looks and interacts together. Um, this can also be handy if you know that there are certain banners that are going to um, sort of interact with each other in some way uh, from an animation standpoint. Sometimes you might have multiple placements on the same page and um, they kind of play off each other or something like that, depending on your creative. So you can just keep previewing it. And um, of course, if you're not happy with any of the animations, you can just jump back into Figma, uh, update the animations or the positioning and uh, re-export it just as we did a second ago. Um, so you can see here in this uh, square frame up here, the 250 by 250, uh, it's reflected the change that we just made while Bannerify was running. So that's this change down here that you can see, um, just in that top right position. So that's the other really neat thing is that um, typically if you're not doing this automatically, uh, when there are these positioning or sizing or animation changes, uh, usually, you know, a developer or somebody building the banners will have to uh, re-save all of these assets from Figma and uh, recalculate all the positioning by going to the code tab over here and kind of figuring out all the different offsets manually and then updating the code once again. Um, but with Bannerify, that becomes, um, that's no longer an issue. So uh, it's really nice to just be able to reduce that feedback loop to zero and just keep iterating on creative and iterating on animation uh, really easily. So there are a few small things I just wanted to point out uh, as well before I move on to a fresh canvas to show you what that looks like. Um, so if we rerun Bannerify for a second, um, there's a couple of things to note. So the first thing is that all of the export settings are kind of preset if you don't set any export settings on your layers. Um, so what I mean by that is uh, if I click on the book now button or any of the, the book now buttons, uh, you can see down here, I've got a, an export setting of PNG at two X. Um, because this frame has a transparent background on it, uh, I really do want that as a PNG. Um, but by default, Bannerify is set to, uh, basically fall back to saving things out as a two X JPEG. Uh, if any layer doesn't have an export setting on it. Um, and that's more just to be on the safe side. If, uh, if everything was made to be a, a 2x PNG or a PNG, um, the image sizes would get very big very quickly. And um, oftentimes there's no transparency or there's no reason to need that PNG. So that's the reason why it kind of defaults to uh, JPEG. But it is worth noting, if you do have any transparency on any of your layers, image layers, uh, you just want to go ahead and set the export setting to PNG at whatever resolution uh, you require. Um, and then your text layers, as I mentioned before, will automatically get uh, rendered out as SVGs. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, so I'll quickly re-export these 
uh, in dark mode with image compression as well, just to show you a little bit of a, a different setting. Uh, so what I might do is just set that to like 75. I might do 85. And I'm actually just going to leave the rest the same just so we can compare uh, the sizes. And I'm just going to export that again. And should be able to save this zip in a second. As I mentioned before, the compression uh, setting will take slightly longer because it has to go through every single image and compress them. Um, but you can see it's already finished and uh, the image savings that you get is uh, definitely worth the, the extra time. So I'm just going to open up the brand new zip. And um, before I do that, the thing you'll notice here is our zip archive size has gone down from 3.2 megabytes to 831 kilobytes. And that's completely due to the fact that we just enabled image compression and set it at um, level 85 in this case. Um, so if you need to get that down even more, you could um, add even more aggressive compression, but uh, even compression at a higher level, like an 85 to 95, uh, will really get that image size down for all of your banners. So I think it's definitely worthwhile. So if you open this up, uh, I'm just going to rerun the index preview page. And now you can see we've got dark mode uh, enabled as well. And uh, because we're running this locally, you might not be able to see the image loader for very long, um, but you can sort of get a glimpse of it in the background there as well. Uh, and once again, the play button can just be clicked infinitely and uh, you can just keep watching those animations. So that's what dark mode looks like. Um, I think it looks pretty cool depending on your creative um, and also helps to simulate if your target website is um, darker or lighter, but also depending on what kind of creative you're using, uh, the dark mode can look kind of nice as well. So compared to the, the light one, um, this kind of looks much nicer, I would, I would say. Um, so that's, that's what dark mode looks like. That's what the loading uh, looks like. And yeah, that's just uh, the infinite kind of uh, uh, refreshing that you can see. And uh, the positioning update I made on the square has um, been rendered now. So in the first one, we moved the text up here. Um, but in the second one, I reverted the text to be um, back down here. And you can see straight away it's, it's moved um, without me having to rewrite any code, uh, which is super nice. And uh, that'll, of course, apply to animations as well. It'll just keep updating it, depending on whatever you've set into Figma. And uh, yeah, that's, that's roughly what that looks like. So I'll just close that off. So this was uh, obviously using the, the file that I already designed as an example, uh, which you're more than welcome to use and grab from the Figma um, community files if you just want to have a bit of a play around with it, as I've just been doing. Um, but the most likely outcome is you're going to want to do this from scratch. So I'm just going to give you a quick demo of what that looks like if you're running the plugin uh, from scratch. So this is a completely blank uh, Figma page. And I'm just going to rerun Bannerify here. And you can see this is a completely different uh, state to what we're used to seeing uh, from the last couple of times we run it. So the reason this is showing up is that our document is completely blank. We have no frames um, so far. So it gives us a couple of options. One is to uh, look at the example file that we were just looking at. So if you click on that, it'll link you straight to opening that Figma file that we were just working in. Uh, but the other option is it'll quickly scaffold out um, a bunch of the most popular sort of sizes or certainly for banner ads um, and you can pick and choose which of these you actually would like to use um, so you can turn them on and off so in this case I might just get rid of the smaller ones um, in my case so now I'm left with nine so you can see here it's kind of telling you how many it's going to create and when you're happy with that you can just click on create nine empty frames and it's immediately uh, added those to our uh, Figma, Figma file. So you can see down here, uh, it's just created all of these brand new fresh frames for us to design things in. And uh, it's named them, it's set all the correct dimensions. 
and uh, they're ready to go. And the Figma UI, uh, the Bannerify UI has changed uh, to reflect that as well. So it's loaded in all of the blank previews. Um, these are, all have nothing in them at the moment. And the kind of prompt here as well is now asking you to uh, add some layers to, to these different frames. Uh, so we can we can totally do that. And now you can basically just design it as if you were designing uh, anything. So, so you just add your normal layers. So we'll do a text layer. Um, and I'll just put... Um, Put a little bit of a hello world in there. It's probably a bit too big. Um, so we can throw it in there. I might just grab a, um, I might just grab an image. This is just using the Unsplash uh, plugin. I don't know what this is, but we'll just use it anyway. And I'll just drop that in there. Okay. So this is a very meaningless banner, but uh, I'm just going to rerun Bannerify with that. And you can see down here, it's it's uh, picked up on my brand new creative, uh, which I'm very proud of. And uh, what it's done is it's just applied, uh, by default it applies a simple fade in animation and cascades that to 0 0.3 seconds with a speed of 0 0.5. So, uh, so that's basically mimicking what we were looking at before with the magic speeds. So it essentially defaults to a few magic speeds uh, for any new creative that you want to um, roll out. So that's just a really nice way to have some animation to serve as a starting point. Um, but of course that can be that can be changed. So we might want to do um, something a little bit different. So we could do a puff in. So I might want to make that a little bit longer. And this is working exactly the same way as we were just playing around with the other other banner campaign. Um, so you can just keep messing about with these. And it really just depends on the creative and the brand or the style that you're trying to go for. Um, so we could do something a bit wackier. Uh, maybe the jello one again. Or this one. That's a bit crazy. We can loop that. So yeah, probably probably uh, don't want to do that version, but um, that's a rough idea of how it could look. Um, so yeah, same thing. If I need to update the layer position, I can just update it here. Refresh. And you can see that come in there now. So in this case, uh, I'm actually just gonna get rid of all of the other frames. Oops, wrong way. Um, so I've just got rid of all the other frames and I'm gonna refresh this one. And I've decided all I want is the uh, medium rectangle. So I'm just gonna hit export and exactly the same process. I'm going to compress the image, vanilla, and uh, actually I'm going to make this one a, a double click one. I'm going to save that. So it's very quick with just one. It takes less than a second. And once again, I can click on that see my preview pop right up. Um, it's probably worth noting as well, you can of course open up the index file per banner. Um, so if I open up that one, you can see that come in quite nicely just on its own. So there we go. 
Um, and you might also notice this, this tab that we just opened with the preview page, um, you'll notice it says page one uh, compared to our other one, which uh, had this other title much more relevant to our campaign. Uh, so if you do want to change that title, all you need to do is go to your page up here, double click on that, and change the page name. And I'll just rerun that for you uh, to show you what that's going to look like. So I'm just going to export that as default. Save it. And there we go. You can see it's got Hello World there uh, instead of page one. So that's what that looks like. Uh, the other thing you can do to relaunch Bannerify uh, if you don't want to continually go to plugins and Bannerify is this new feature that Figma's just released, uh, which Bannerify has uh, included. So it's clicking on this little bear icon over here, the Bannerify icon, and just click on that. And it will relaunch Bannerify for you. So you don't have to keep uh, opening the plugin. And um, that will only show up after you've already manually run the plugin once. Um, but once you've already used it in your file or in your Figma page, uh, this will be available to you to keep um, rerunning the plugin very easily. So that's a uh, an overview of pretty much everything uh, you need to know to animate uh, and export production-ready HTML banners directly from Figma. And if this is something that you do very often, uh, I hope that having the ability to regenerate uh, HTML and CSS um, within a couple of seconds is going to be really uh, helpful to your workflow. Uh, that's the reason that it exists uh, to solve that problem. So uh, I hope that you enjoy using it and uh, I look forward to doing another tutorial uh, once I have more to share uh, with Bannerify and other plugins.